A 12 year old boy comes to the OPD with complaints of progressively severe pain in left lower thigh and knee for two months, during which he kept consulting several local doctors and tried various analgesics. On examination in the OPD, he was unable to walk without support, unable to squat, and unable to flex his left thigh and knee. So, how to proceed next? Now, whenever a child presents to you with complaints of pain in limbs, you must first assess whether the joint is involved or not at the first place. This you do by clinical examination, the most common method being P-GALS and if required imaging of the joint. If no, you must rule out other differential diagnoses which are transient synovitis, Perthes disease, slipped capital femoral epiphysis, osteomyelitis, bone tumors and leukemia. If yes, you can call it arthritis, which is a combination of arthralgia, that is pain in joints, along with the restriction of joint movements. Next, you must identify which joints are involved. If axial, then examples are ankylosing spondylitis and some other spondyloarthritis. If primarily peripheral, then most of the other causes are usually peripheral only. Then, if peripheral, you must assess whether it is monoarthritis or it is polyarthritis. In case it is monoarthritis, you should look for fever. If fever is present, possibilities can be septic arthritis, henoch schonlein purpura, Kawasaki disease, tuberculosis in which low-grade fever is present, and reactive arthritis. At times in tubercular uh, arthritis, fever might not be present also. If fever is not present, then the possible differential diagnosis can be trauma, hemarthrosis, psychogenic and Menchosen syndrome that is battered baby syndrome. Now, if it is polyarthritis, you must ask three questions. First, what joints are involved, whether large or small? Large joints are characteristically involved in arthritis seen in acute rheumatic fever, septic arthritis and reactive arthritis. While both large and small joints are seen involved in juvenile idiopathic arthritis, psoriatic arthritis in which the characteristic involvement is of distal interphalangeal joints, connective tissue disorders and gout. Second question is the arthritis migratory or additive. Migratory arthritis is seen in acute rheumatic fever, intermittent arthritis in SLE and sickle cell disease, while additive arthritis is seen in all, almost all the other causes. Migratory means the second joint will be involved only when the first joint has healed completely. Intermittent means different joints are involved at different points of time with or without overlap of time. And additive means the second or the third joint can be involved even when the first joint has not completely healed. So the next question you must assess is the arthritis associated with some other extra articular features also? Like on general examination, we can see if there is conjunctivitis, uveitis, it is seen in GIA, Kawasaki disease and reactive arthritis. Strawberry tongue, cracked lips, malar rash is seen in Kawasaki disease and SLE respectively. Nail pitting on is seen in psoriatic arthritis, not commonly seen in children. Lymphadenopathy is characteristic of Kawasaki disease, SLE and GIA. While Mellar rash and Gautran papules are seen in SLE and JDM, that is juvenile dermatomyositis, respectively. Some other clinical clues are also there. For example, age. Common causes seen in early childhood are rheumatoid factor negative, polyarticular GIA, Kawasaki disease, and Hinox schonlein purpura. Late childhood is rheumatoid factor positive, polyarticular GIA, enthesitis related arthritis, and SLE. Then, Females usually have SLE and polyarticular GI, while males usually have Kawasaki disease and various spondyloarthropathies. And systemic onset juvenile idiopathic arthritis has almost equal sex predilection. Now remember, seronegative spondyloarthropathies can be remembered easily by the mnemonic PARI, where P stands for psoriatic arthritis, A for ankylosing spondylitis, R for reactive arthritis, and I is arthritis secondary to inflammatory bowel disease. Onset is acute in septic arthritis and Kawasaki disease and Hinoxonlein purpura. 
it is subacute or insidious onset in polyarticular GI. The duration is typically less than six weeks in viral arthritis, rheumatic arthritis, and reactive arthritis, whereas it is more than six weeks in juvenile idiopathic arthritis. So now coming on to investigations. The first line or baseline investigations are CBC, CRP, ESR, antistreptolysin O, titers, rheumatoid factor, ANA, and urine RM. Remember, imaging might also be required at times if the clinical examination is not very conclusive. Imaging is required as a first line investigation. This includes X-ray joint to rule out avascular necrosis, tuberculosis, subluxation, malalignment and ankylosis which can also cause joint pain, ultrasound joint to rule out effusion and an MRI joint to rule out effusion, erosion and periarticular changes. Remember sometimes CPK may also be required at this stage to rule out proximal muscle weakness. The second line investigation basically comprises of a detailed serology that is anti-DS DNA and anti-smooth muscle antibody. So now to wrap up, a child presenting with pain in limbs, first rule out differential diagnosis. If it is arthritis, look for the second step, whether it is axial or primarily peripheral. If peripheral, see if it is monoarthritis, whereby you have to look for fever, whether it is present or not. If it is polyarthritis, you ask three questions. First, what type of joints are involved, large or small? pattern of involvement and extraarticular features whether present or not. You also look at age, sex, onset of arthritis and duration of arthritis. Next you proceed on for certain investigations. The first line investigations are CBC, CRP, ESR, ASO, rheumatoid factor, ANA, urine RM and imaging sometimes might be required. And then second line investigations include a detailed serology. Now coming back to the case we had started the video with. This child presented to us with pain in left limb. On examination he had arthritis left hip and knee. It was primarily peripheral, polyarthritis. Usually large joints were in, matlab, the child had large joint involvement. The pattern was additive. There were no extra articular systemic features. He was a 12 year old boy. Onset of arthritis was insidious and duration was more than 6 weeks. So our provisional clinical diagnosis was polyarticular GI. You can see from here itself we can reach up to a provisional clinical diagnosis. We started the child on naproxen and he started showing some improvement. Meanwhile we had the reports of investigations in which hemoglobin was 8 gram per cent, normocytic normochromic anemia, CRP was 13 mg per liter, ESR 35 mm and first R. ASO negative and rheumatoid factor was positive. Urine was normal. So a second line or detailed serology was not required and the child was finally diagnosed as rheumatoid factor positive polyarticular GI. Hope now we are clear about as to how to approach a child with arthritis. Do share it. Thank you.